Greetings and welcome to the basement. In this video we're going to continue working on our little micro adventure game and to start off there's a couple of things that I want to clean up because we have a problem. It's not a very big problem and yes it's an engineered problem but it's a problem nonetheless and it has to deal with the caves. So let's go ahead and rev this up get to the cave. So I'm going to go to the cave. I'm going to enter the cave. And so now I'm going to go left and this is where the problem begins. So here I was at the entrance. I went left. And if I go back, it makes sense that it takes me back to the inside of the cave. That's where I just left. But rather if I go left, and then I take the slanted passage. So now I'm in passage two. So I've gone from passage one to passage two. Go back would seem to imply that I'm going back to passage one. However, it takes me back to the entrance of the cave, which is exactly how we set this up. And this is not good. That creates a moment of user confusion. Probably a very small moment. It's probably not something that even every user is going to notice. But still, that's an inconsistency. What does go back mean? Well, it means two different things depending on which node, which block I just came from. That's not good. We don't want that. And yes, I know this is a simple little demonstration project. But if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. So how can we fix this? Instead of saying go back here, this needs to be more descriptive. But it, I can't really change this to uh, this go back message here. I can't really call this inside cave. Because that doesn't make any sense either. I mean, I'm already inside the cave. I'm going to go inside the cave when I'm inside the cave. It, wait, what? No, that's strange. So rather, I've got an outside cave here, an inside cave. I'm going to change this inside cave to cave entrance. All right. So now I can go back to my passages and say, okay, you know what? Instead of going, where are you? Uh, da, da, da. Instead of going to inside cave or going back, I am going to go to cave entrance. And then I'm going to modify this one over here. Instead of go back, I'm going to say cave entrance. Now, I, I could probably get a little bit more creative with these descriptions and such. Um, but this is at least cleanly functional. We always want to be looking out for that for our users. We never want to put something in place that is going to needlessly and without purpose confuse our players. Sometimes we want to deliberately confuse our players and that's okay as long as you've got a specific reason for doing it and you're not going to end up wasting your players time. That's a little caveat there. We can deliberately confuse them and mislead them as long as we're not deliberately wasting their time. But this is not that situation. This was just a case of poor, a poorly named room and poorly named options. It's now been fixed and I'll shush about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start putting in some functionality. And I'm going to start off with this leave bit here because that'll be a nice short little bit of functionality that I can drop in. And I'll be using largely the same logic over here on the shop, but the shop's going to be more complicated. So we'll do the easy version first. So that way, and I can take, spend some more time on it. And then when I get to the shop, I'll go a little bit faster because it's basically going to be more of the same, just a bit more. Okay, so what happens? If I try to leave for adventure, I need to make sure I have a rope. Now there's, there's a wide range that you can track quest states. I generally tend to think of it in two ways. Um, you can have flags and you can have stages. A flag is just going to be a simple Boolean true false value. Did you do this? Did you not do this? Do you have the thing or not? This, that sort of thing. 
And in this particular case, a flag will work just fine. Um, I could also do stages. Um, if you've ever opened up the editor in Skyrim or Fallout series, Fallout 3, 4, uh, they use quest stages in there if you want to go take a look at that. But uh, I'm just going to use a basic Boolean flag. So, of course, I'm going to need a variable. Now, if this was a more complicated project, what I would most likely do is I would drop in a new flowchart, which I would call data. And then I would put, you know, my global type variables I'm going to need to use throughout the entire game in here. Um, this project definitely is not that complicated, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to have all of my variables inside this one flowchart. Which is, again, yeah, it's fine, just as long as you don't have a lot of variables. If you're trying to do your whole game in one flowchart, yeah, you're kind of missing the point. You want to use multiple flowcharts for a full game. Okay, so yeah, let's see here, Boolean, that sounds fine. I wasn't really paying attention too much. <laughs> Luckily, it defaults to the right one, so yeah, Boolean. And I shall call this has rope. And of course, by default, this should be unchecked and private, public, pr doesn't really matter because I'm not doing another flowchart. Okay, so now here in this leave, I need to check to see, okay, do I have the rope. And if I do have the rope, I want to take one set of actions. And if I don't have the rope, then I want another set of actions. Simple enough, right? Well, and now this is, now we're starting to get down a little bit to personal preference here. To my mind, it works better with this type of visual layout um, to do a split here, to have multiple nodes. I could do all of my logic inside this leave node here. Um, using the if blocks and other things, but eh, I don't really like doing that. Um, I've tried it before, and if you don't do things perfectly, it's going to get squirrely, and yeah, I just find it better to split off into separate nodes. Within reason, of course, this is always situational dependent. So what I'm going to do in here is, um, and apparently my laptop is now available for streaming. You know what? Let me just take a moment to turn Steam off here because we don't need that running. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put in a narrative flow event here. So da, 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 where did you go? I mean, I'm sorry, a narrative flow event, Durr. a flow if statement. So I'm going to put an if, and I'm going to check to see if I have rope. And if indeed I do have rope, then I will put in a call command, which I'll come back and fix in a moment. Otherwise, if I don't have the rope, I'll also have a call command. And then, of course, in Fungus, you always want to close off your if statements. Always, always, always want to have an end for your if statements. Again, otherwise things can get kind of squirrely on you. All right, so I'm going to need another node here. Actually, I'm going to need two nodes. So I am going to drop in two additional nodes here. I'm going to call this one no rope. And I will call this one yes rope. And all I'm going to do on yes rope is put in a just a simple narrative say you embark on your grand adventure. And for no rope, I will put in a narrative say oops, that's a narrative portrait command. No, no, no. Narrative say have rope before you leave. And then a call command to go back to the town square.
And then from here, I'll update my call. So if my have rope is equal to false, then obviously that should go to no rope. And otherwise, this means I do in fact have my rope and that should go to yes rope. And again, yes rope's gonna be a dead end because that's kind of sort of our win state. That's our victory condition. We completed our simple little adventure. And yeah, well, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, pretty basic logic there. And again, showing this idea of if you're starting to ask, well, how am I going to structure this in fungus? 90% of the time, the answer is add more blocks. Adding more blocks will almost always be a successful solution. Might not necessarily be the optimal solution or the easiest to manage solution, but it'll almost always enable you to continue to move forward. All right, I'll see here. I'm going to go ahead and break this video off here because I don't want another 20-minute epic like the last one. And in the next video, we will take a look at setting up our shop and setting up quest stages instead of quest flags. And so, until the next video, take care.